thing, though. This thing has to have some limit on uh, whatever. Well, let's see now. We're in section 5-1, trying to do problem number 12. And problem number 12 says x prime is equal to y, and y prime is equal to x. OK, that seems reasonable. Is that enough? Let's see, what are we supposed to Oh, Forget about the instructions, too. We're not doing that. We're just going to solve the problem. Well, if y prime is equal to x, and this would sort of imply that y prime is equal to x double prime, right? So that means that x double prime minus x has to equal 0. Well, that has a characteristic equation, doesn't it? Um, I think so. Um, r squared minus 1 is 0, implying r is uh, plus or minus 1, right? So uh, x of t has to equal uh, c1 e to the um, t plus c2 e to the minus t. And then if that's x, x, if that's x, then y has to equal what? If that's x, And I guess I blew it. I solved for x. If I would have solved for y, it would have been okay. Um, x prime is y. There we go. x prime is y. So y of t is going to be uh, c1 e to the t minus c2 e to the minus t. Ta-da! Check my work. Should I check it? It checks. It does? All right, so the derivative of the x guy has to equal y. It does. And the derivative of the y guy has to equal x. It does. Oh, OK, good enough. Number 14. Okay, so x prime is equal to 10y. And y prime is equal to minus 10x. And x at 0 is equal to 3. And y at 0 is equal to 4. OK. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this guy here. I'm going to rewrite him. y is equal to x prime over 10. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. And then y prime is going to equal to x double prime over 10, which also has to equal minus 10x. OK, so x double prime plus 100x has to equal 0. And that has a characteristic equation. And that characteristic equation is um, r squared plus 100 equals 0. So r has to equal plus or minus 10i. So x of t has to be uh, c1 cosine 10x plus c2 sine 10x. Okay, and uh, x at 0 is um, 3, implying very strongly that c1 is 3. Okay, so x of t is equal to 3 cosine 10x plus c2 sine 10x. Now, um, x prime is equal to 10y. x prime is equal to 10y. OK, so, so y of t has to be the derivative of the x guy divided by 10. OK, so that's going to be uh, minus 30 sine plus 10c2 cosine. 
So y of t has to be uh, minus 3 sine plus c2 cosine. And y at 0 is, um, y at 0 is 4, implying very strongly that c2 is 4. So now I can write down my final answers. Final answer. Y of t equals um, 4 cosine x minus 3 sine x. Why is there a 10 here and a 10 there and no 10 there or 10 there or 10 here or 10 there or 10 here? or 10 there. What do I do? Change the problem in the middle of the stream. x of t is equal to x of t is equal to um, 3 cosine 10x 4 plus 4 sine 10x Can you go to the top of no, then I might find an error or something. I might have to redo the whole problem. Why would I want to do that for? Okay, how far up? Um, how did you get the XL prime over I took the derivative of Y. So I know Y is this, so Y prime has to be that. And I also know that Y prime has to be minus 10X. Um, dumb luck. Yeah, dumb luck. But I, I have so little to work with, you know, it's not like I have to bring other stuff in to work with it. So that's the only material I have to work with, so that's what I would do. So since you can say the derivative of the y, you have to do the x also? No, not necessarily. I could have gone the other way. Is that the question? I could go the other way. Yeah, I, I could go the other way and do it differently, you yeah. know. So this is 14. And uh, x is 3 cosine 10x plus 4 sine cosine. Sine. And uh, yep, that's what I got. And y is uh, 4 co cosine minus 3 sine. Yeah. So um, this uh, checks with back of book. I guess the, the reason that I'm doing it the way I did is I did something really strange. Uh, once in my adult life, I read the chapter telling me how to do it, and that's probably why I do it that way. <laughs> I, I don't remember. That was so long ago. But I, that may have happened. I may have actually, you know, looked in the problems, looked in the examples in the chapter. You know. I know it's hard to believe that one would do I mean, that. That's such a silly thing to be doing. I mean, really. Right. Uh huh? I mean, why, why would anybody want to do something that weird? I mean, the author writes the book so you can buy it, right? Well, that doesn't mean you have to read it or look at it or anything. I mean, really. All right, so x prime is equal to 8y, and y prime is equal to minus 2x. So I'm going to, I'm going to take the first guy, and, and I, could take, I could start the other way. I could start with the second guy if I wanted to. But I'm going to take the first guy and say that y is equal to x prime over 8. And then I'm going to take the derivative of that and say y prime is x double prime over 8. And then I'm going to say, well, that's really equal to minus 2x, minus 2x. And then I'm going to say, OK, using, using those guys there, I'm going to write an equation that says um, x double prime plus 16 x is equal to zero. And then I'm going to fall back on chapter two and say I have a characteristic equation. And the characteristic equation is r squared plus 16 equals zero. And that has roots of um, plus or minus 2i. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Yeah, yeah, it does. 4i. That's what I meant to say, 4i. I knew there was something wrong with it. I just couldn't figure it out. So that, that means x of t 
has to be in the form C1 um, cosine 4t C2 sine 4t. So now I know what x is and I go back to the top and it says well x prime is 8y. Okay, so I'm going to go uh, x prime is equal to minus 4 c1 sine plus 4 c2 cosine and that's equal to 8y so y of t must equal minus 1 half c1 sine 4t plus 1 half c2 cosine 4t. All right, and then we go and look in the back of the book and um, come on the wrong page for the second time in a row. And that's uh, 16. And uh, 4t, 4t, yes, well, minus a half t on the sine guy. And plus a half on the cosine. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, one could one could one could think that, right? Um, but I I don't think so. I, I don't think you'd do that. Um, the um, the problem is um, C one. And C2, what are they? Um, hmm, 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 hmm. They, they, C1 and C2 are not the, the initial conditions of the X guy. They're not the initial condition of the Y guy. One of them is the initial condition of X. One is the initial condition of Y. We bring them together. So because of that, we can't go and just suck it up like that. All right? Does that does that make any sense? Probably not. But I'm st I'm sticking with it. So these guys are not constant of integrations um, with regard to a variable. They're constant of integrations regarded both variables, and therefore we can't just neglect them. And if you look in the back of the book, they don't even use C1, C2. They use A and B to differentiate that brilliance. But not looking in the back of the book before I started solving the problem set meant that I couldn't do that. OK, eight, number 18, and then I'm done in this section. Do I have to do any more than this section today? Yes, I do, because we're behind. How did we get behind? Um, huh? Is that is all Andy's fault? Okay, Andrew's fault. We're behind because of Andrew. Okay, I'll accept that. X prime equals minus Y. And Y prime equals 10X minus 7Y. And uh, X at 0 is 2. Y at 0 is minus 7. Okay, so we're, we're sticking with that. Okay, so um, hmm, what are we going to do? I'm going to take this guy here and say that um, that being the case, then y has to equal minus x prime, and y prime has to be equal minus x double prime, which has to equal 10x minus 7y, but y is minus x prime minus 7x prime. But this is a minus sign 2, and I wouldn't get it right if I didn't put that one in. Right, because y, that minus sign goes over there, kept to 7 here. Okay, so I've got a characteristic equation that says x double prime plus x 10x. Oh, bummer. 
x double prime plus 7x prime plus 10x is equal to 0. And uh, that has a characteristic equation of um, r squared plus 7r plus 10, which factors um, r plus 5, r plus 2, which means r can be a, a minus 5 or a minus 2. All right, so x of t is equal to uh, c1 e to the minus 5t plus c2 e to the minus 2t. Okay, so I got that. Now x prime is equal to minus y. x prime Okay, so x prime is equal to minus y. So y of t is going to be minus 5, minus 5c1e to the minus 5t, minus 2c2e to the minus 2t. So y of t is equal to 5c1e to the minus 5t plus 2 c2 e to the minus 2t. Okay, now we're going to apply some initial conditions. If we can remember what problem we're doing, we're doing 18. So x at 0 is 2, which is going to be c1 plus c2. And y at 0 is minus 7, which is going to be 5c1 plus 2c2. All right, Kramer's rule, c1 equals 2 minus 7, 1, 2. 2 minus 7, no, not 2 minus 7. Silliness. 1, 5, 1, 2. 4 minus a minus 7 is 11. Five, 2 minus 5 is minus 3. Well, that, that's terrible. That's just totally terrible. Uh, which implies C2 is equal to what is... Um, 17 thirds? All right, so x of t, x of t is going to equal minus 11 thirds e to the minus 5t plus 17 thirds e to the minus, is it 2t? 2t. And y of t is equal to 5 times c1 minus 55 over 3 e to the minus 50, um, 5t plus 2 plus times c2 34 over 3 e to the minus 2t. Okay, so x at 0 is supposed to be 2. 17 minus 11 is 6 divided by 3 is 2. Check. y at 0 is supposed to be minus 7. 21 divided by 3 minus 7. Check. Okay, so the initial conditions check, and uh, probably the back of the book checks too. Okay, so we're done with section 5.1. Moving to section, huh? What? Somebody have an objection? Say, say again. All after whatever. Oh. When the homework saying was supposed to be what? Eleven to nineteen. So why would I want to do twenty-four?
No, I was just wondering what we were supposed to do. Yeah, okay, let me look back, see if I want to do 20. No, no, no. Yeah, I could do 20, not a problem. Yeah, problem, but 20 is not an issue. I could do 20. Solve it just like these other ones solve. Okay, section 5-2. And in section 5-2, we're concerned with problems 1 through 27. Okay, so good luck there. Uh, this is called an elimination method. Yeah, yeah, this is gonna gonna take some patience, I can tell. Okay, so if I start with number two, all right, I forgot x prime is equal to x minus two y, and y prime is equal to two x minus three y. It looks like we just ought to take Laplace transforms of that, right? What would be stopping us from doing that? Are we allowed to use like everything we've learned up to this point in this chapter? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> but you're supposed to find a general solution of the linear problems 1 through 20. If initial conditions are given, find a particular solution. In problems one through six, use a computer system or graphic calculator to construct a um, directed field or typical curve of the thing. Well, we're not going to do any graphing calculator curvy things. Okay, so we have this problem. What are we going to do? Uh, hmm. If I take this problem and rewrite it as y is equal to um, y is equal to minus x prime um, <laughs> plus x over 2. Okay, can I do that? I'll do that. And then I can say y prime is minus x double prime over 2 plus x prime over 2, right? I can do that. All right, and then I'm going to take the second equation and say y prime, which is minus x double prime over 2 plus x prime over 2 has to equal 2x minus 3 times y, which is minus x prime over 2 plus x over 2. Oh, isn't that nice? Now i got an equation in x only. Okay, so I've got x double prime, okay, so minus x double prime over 2. And then I've got 6, I have 3 halves, which are positive. 3 halves coming to the other side will be negative, minus x prime. I've got 2x minus 3 halves, that'd be positive 1 half, so that'd be minus x over 2 is equal to 0. Okay, and I'd, I'd probably write that as, um, well, how come everything is negative? All right. So I'd probably write that as x double prime plus 2x prime plus x is equal to 0. And then I'd, I'd call a characteristic equation, um, um, r squared plus 2r plus x is 0, plus 1 is 0, and then I say that's r plus 1. So I have repeated roots of uh, minus 1 and minus 1. All right, so that being the case, x of t is going to be 
c1 e to the minus t plus c2x e to the minus t. Is it for t there? Yeah, t. What's wrong with t? Oh, no, is it c2x e to the minus t or c2t to the minus t? t. Oh, I see, yeah. I'm changing variables on you. C to yeah, oh, it's such a such a picky thing. All right, but if I went on, I wouldn't get the right answer, would I? Okay, now if that is x, if that's x, then y, then y of t is equal to minus x prime over two plus x over 2. Is that not so? Minus x prime over 2 plus x over 2. All right. So a y of t is going to be this derivative minus c1 e to the minus t plus c2 e to the minus t minus c two t e to the minus t plus c one e to the minus t plus c two t e to the minus t all divided by two so y of t is going to be um, that guy and that guy goes away this guy and this guy goes away, c2 e to the minus t over 2. And I can look at both of my answers at the same time. I move to the back of the book to um, problem number 2. And it says x is c1 e to the minus t plus c2 t e to the minus t, which is exactly what I have. And y of t is whole city not even close. I mean, we're talking about massively different. Like, I have one lousy term, and it has three terms. And my term is wrong. Oh, well. So much for getting three in a row. Right? How many? So much for getting five in a row, right? I guess I already got four in a row, right? All right, where's my red marker? There's my red marker. Okay, so we come back up here. And, uh, okay, so this guy goes like that. Do we agree? Yes, we do. Shake your head yes. Okay, I take the derivative, I get this. That has to be 2x minus 3y. That one's y. That has to be true. Well, uh, we don't have to check that because we know x of t is right. So if x, and the problem was that now that we have x of t right, we couldn't find y of t. That was our problem. So x of t is right, and y of t is minus x prime over 2 plus x over 2. Okay, so. I, that's a um, silly me minus like that. See that minus sign? I didn't apply it. And that was obviously Andy's fault because he should have caught that. All right, so now I've got C1 plus another C1 for two C1s divided by two. So I have c1 e to the minus t. And then I've got a c2 minus c2 e to the minus t over 2. And then I've got one of them. i got another one divided by 2 plus c2 t e to the minus t. Okay, now I go and look in the back of the book. And very good, the instructor got it right. Excellent. All right, now we get to turn the page. Skipping four, going to six. Um, hmm. Skipping four, going to six. Number six. 
x prime x plus 9y y prime minus 2x minus 5y x at 0 is 3 y of 0 is 2. Now, because I have x of 0 and y of 0, there's no reason I couldn't use the plus transforms on this guy, except I'm in chapter 5. Okay, so, but it, if I were to put that, which I'm not going to, but if I was to put a problem like that on the test, and you were to use Laplace transforms on it in chapter 5, I'd probably just take off 10 points, because you would have missed it. <laughs> All right, aren't I good? That was pretty good. Anyway, back to what we're doing. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this guy and solve him for y and say y is equal to um, hmm, x prime over 9 minus x over 9. And uh, y prime is going to be x double prime over 9 minus x prime over 9. Um, which also has to equal 2 minus 2 times x minus 5 times y, which is x prime over 9 minus x over 9. Okay, hope I did that right. Okay, so I got an x double prime over 9. I've got a uh, 5 ninths, which will become positive when it goes to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to have positive 4 ninths x prime. Then I have minus 2 minus 9 minus 1 ninth. So that will be 19 ninths, which will be positive when I come to the other side of the board. x is equal to 0. I'm going to multiply everything by 9. And I'm going to have x double prime plus 4x prime plus 19x is equal to 0. And I'm going to have a characteristic equation. Um, r squared plus 4r plus 19 is 0. I'm going to use the half quadratic formula because this guy is even. Minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 minus 19. All right, so that's going to be um, 2 minus 2 plus or minus um, 4i. 4i. So x of t is going to be e to the minus 2t c1 cosine 4t plus c2 sine 4t. And if that's not a pain in the rear end, I don't know what is. All right, so that's x of t. All right, so x prime of t is... Oh, hmm. x prime of t is minus 2 e to the minus 2t c1. Um, should we apply an initial condition? I, I, think, I think we should apply an initial condition before we go on, right? I think we should. Um, x at 0 is um, what? 3. We're probably working anyway. We're not doing, we must be doing, what are we doing? 6. We're only up to 6? All right, it's 3. Well, if x of 0 is 3, that implies c1 is 3. Okay, so we can write x of t is equal to e to the minus 2t times 3 cosine 4t plus c2 sine 4t. So we'll do that. And that might save some ink later on. 
Okay, so x prime t is equal to minus e minus 2 e to the minus 2t 3 cosine 4t plus c2 sine or I've never done it this way before so I'm not sure it's going to work plus e to the minus 2t times minus 12 sine 4t plus 4 c2 cosine 4t. I have a question. Uh, okay, go ahead. Can you go a little bit? You know I will, right? Like that far? No. <laughs> Uh, how did you get 19x up over? Huh? Right above that upper line. 19x? No. 19x. Yeah, go up to 16 over the next line. How did you get 19 ninths? Here is, here is 18 ninths sitting right here. And then there's a 5 ninths. Oh, there's yeah. a 5. Oh. <laughs> oh. You stabbed me in the back. Oh, I don't believe it. What a hoser. Doesn't tell me until way late. Oh. Okay, so this is 18 <laughs> minus 5, making this 13, right? So that's going to be 13. Uh, and this is going to be 13. And this is going to be 13. And this is going to be 13. And this is going to be 3. Is that better? Okay, so that's going to be 3, 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 but this is going to be 3, that's going to be 3, this is going to be a 9, and this is going to be a 3. Okay, so everything fine now? Everything meets Andy's professionalism and we can move, proceed. Now, this is problem number uh, six, right? Now. So, y, as we recall, y of t is equal to x prime over 9 minus x over 9. Okay, so y of t is equal to how can I possibly write that down? All right, I will. Okay, so there's the, I see I, I can write x of t, I can see it pretty quickly. Okay, we're, we're going to rewrite this so that I have a better chance. I'm going to write it minus x over 9 minus x double prime over 9. Okay, so x over 9 is going to be. e to the minus 2t minus e to the minus 2t over 9 times three cosine three t plus c2 sine three t Okay, so I've got that part. Now they, they both can't be negative, can they? One of them has to be positive. This guy's got to be positive, right? Um, yeah, that guy's, that guy's the positive guy. All right, uh, plus that thing. Right, so I've got plus minus 2 e to the minus 2 t times three cosine three t plus c two sine three t plus e to the minus two t 
minus 9 sine plus 3 cosine, 3C2 cosine, 3T. This is going to be over 9 over 9. This is not double prime. You're right. You can, I, but I didn't do a double prime there. I only did a single prime. Is that okay? See right up here. Where is it? Y of t is x prime over 9 minus x over 9. And that's what I'm doing. All right, so that's what I did. Is supposed to be a sign of 3t? Yeah. Yeah, everything that's squibbly that you can't read is a 3. All right, so now, hmm. I've got, um, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to apply an initial condition. y at 0 is supposed to be 2. All right, so I've got minus 1 ninth times 3 plus minus 1 ninth. Why did I put the plus sign down? Times 3 plus 1 ninth times 3C2. Okay, so 2 has to equal minus 6 over 9 plus 3 over 9c2. Okay, so I multiply everything by 9. 18 equals minus 6 plus 3c2. 22. 22. Is that? No, 24. 24 <laughs> equals 3c2 implying that C2 is equal to 8. Right? C2 is equal to 8? Alright, so if I put C2 is equal to 8 in that equation, uh, how am I going to be able to write that? Okay, I got it. I got it. I got a handle on it. Okay, so we're going to copy and paste this at the bottom of the page. And then we're going to put a, we're going to make the C2 an 8. All right, so the C2 is an 8, so we'll put an 8 there. The C2 is an 8, so we'll put an 8 here. The C2 is an 8, so we'll put a 24 there. Okay, that fine? Why I'm not done yet. Y of t is equal to, there's a cosine, there's a cosine, there's a cosine, right? So I've got minus one third, minus two thirds, plus, plus 24 thirds, Okay, so I've got that. e to the minus 2t cosine 3t. And then I've got plus, I'm looking at the sine terms. I've got a minus 8 ninths. I've got a minus 16 ninths. And I've got a minus 1 e to the minus 2t sine 3t. Uh, this is a 1. So, uh, well, it's 3 from that. So this is a 7. So I have y of t is equal to 7 e to the minus 2t cosine 3t plus minus. Minus. All right, so this is 9. And this is 24, no, that's not, 24, 24 plus 9 is 33, 
33. So this is minus 11 thirds. 11 thirds sine 3t. Oh, did we get it? No. What do you mean no? What do you mean no? I mean, that it's so obvious that that's the right answer. How could you even consider no to be a proper response? All right. A 3 and a 9 for the x guy? Where's the x guy? He's so far up there, who knows? So there's a 3. We have a 3. C2's got to be a 9. Oh, bummer. C2's got to be a 9. All right, so C2's got to be a 9. So he did some... What is this over... Oh, that's a 2. Okay, so all right. 3 plus 3 is 6, right? And that guy's right. I multiply everything by 9. 9, 9, 9. I add 6. I get 24. I divide by 3. I do not get 9. Isn't life that way? All right, so y at 0. This guy's 0, so I have a 3. 1 ninth, 3. Minus, ooh, there's a 2 there. See that 2? There's a 2 sitting right there. Oh, yes, yeah, so if this is a 2, then this is a, a 6. That's not a 6. That's still a 3. This is a 3 plus 6 is 9. And that's a 9. And this is a 27. And as I was saying, C2 is 9. I don't see why anybody was even thinking anything other than that. So this is a 9. That's a 9. That's a 27. All right, so now we're now we're down to here, and um, okay, so I got one third. I've got a one. No, I don't. Cut that out. Okay, so I, I'm looking at cosine. I got a one third. I got a minus two thirds. And I got a three. So this is this is a seven sitting there. Okay, and then I've got a this is the sine guy. So I've got nine over nine. This is the sine guy. So I've got eighteen over nine. This is the sine guy, I got minus one. Okay, so this is uh, 9. That's a 9? No, it's not. Yeah, it is. That's a 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. And then I got 1, 2, 3, 4. Is that right now? No. What do you mean, no? <laughs> Uh, 2 and minus 4. Now, how do they get a 2 there? How do I get an 8 there? 1, 2, 3. I only get a... Oh, that's a 4. This guy here. 3, that's a 9, right? Okay, how did I do that wrong? This is the cosine guy. 27 divided by 9. Right? All right, so that's 3 minus 1, making it 2. 3, oh, wrong one. So it's 3 minus 1, making this guy 2. Now I got it right. Not that being right, yeah, uh, being right is so overrated anyway. Okay, and the other one I got right, I don't have x right yet because I never wrote it down. Right? So x of t 
Where's x of t? x of t is um, e to the minus 2t times 3 cosine 3 cosine 3t plus 9 sine 3t. Now am I okay? Can I go on? All right, that was, um, is that 6? I skip, skipping 8, moving on to 10. And uh, with 10, we'll be done with this. Uh, we'll go home. I won't go home. I have another class, but you can go home. Oh, bummer. Look at that. X prime. 2y prime. 4x, 5y. 2x prime, y prime, 3x. x at 0 is 1, y at 0 is minus 1. Okay, so if I take this guy, I can say y prime is equal to 2x prime minus 3x, right? Yes, I, I could say that. Okay. Then... I could take him and put him back into there. And if I did, I could say that x prime plus 2 times 2x two prime minus 3x is equal to 4x plus 5y. So I, I could do that, and I could say x prime 4 5x prime minus 6, 6, 10, minus 10x, minus 10x, and that's going that way, is equal to 5y. x prime, okay, so I, I could do that, and then, Huh? I could say that y is equal to x prime minus one half x. Then I could say, huh? What? What? Did I say that wrong? I could say that. Minus five x. Two times three is six. Two times three is minus six. And then a minus 4 makes it minus 10. Okay, so I didn't do that wrong. Okay, so y prime is x double prime minus 1 half x prime. But y prime is also equal to 2x prime minus 3x. Okay, so now I've got one equation in x only that says x double prime minus 5 halves x prime plus 3x is equal to 0. Okay, I'm going to multiply everything by 2. I am 2x double prime minus 5x prime plus 6 is equal to 0. And then I'm going to try to factor that. That doesn't factor, does it? Oh, I don't 
think it factors. Bummer. Okay, so x, uh, I have a characteristic equation. So I have a um, characteristic equation. 2r squared minus 5r plus 6 is 0. r is going to be 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 2 times 6 divided by 4. So r is going to be 5 over 4 plus or minus. So this is 25 minus 28, uh, 48, is that what it is? I know. But it's too late in the day. That's the real issue. Okay, so 25 minus 4 times 2 times 6. Minus 23. Okay, so this is going to be the square root of 23i over 2. Okay. Now, at that point, we know that this is going to, that, is it x of t? Yeah. So, x of t needs to be in the form e to the 5 over 4t cosine c1, c1 cosine square root of 23 over 2t plus c2 sine square root of 23 over 2t. Isn't that lovely? Now, we can look in the back of the book and see if we're even close, right? Because if, the, if we're not really, if, if we don't have anything that looks like that, for number 10, look at number 10. Then I just piss you off. Yeah, it does. Am I doing number 10? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing number 10, yeah. Well, that means that the problem is so pathetically hosed <laughs> that there is absolutely no hope for it. Absolutely not. I mean, we're talking about, we're talking about hose city to the nth degree. Am I, am I looking at the right problem set? Yep. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the right problem set. I sure am. And it says that uh, very clearly that uh, x of t is equal to uh, e to the t and y of t is equal to minus e to the t, which is so far away from anything that looks like our answer, it makes us look sick. So as a group, because obviously whatever mistake I made, you guys are supposed to catch, right? Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this answer into the book to see if it's right. So x prime of t is e to the t, and y prime of t is minus e to the t, right? All right, so x of t, so e to the t minus 2 minus e to the t is supposed to equal 4 times e to the t plus 5 times minus e to the t, which is wrong. It doesn't. 3 e to the t does not equal minus e to the t. So how could the author possibly think that his answer is right? X prime. Oh, this is a positive. This is a positive sign there. Shit. <laughs> As I was saying, the author's answer checks. Our answer is pathetic at best. All right, so maybe 
Maybe if we go, if we switch to red, maybe we can find it. What do you think? All right, so got that. We take this guy and we write him like that. No, we take this guy. We take this guy and we write him like this. That's correct. And we, then we put that into there and we get that. Okay, that looks correct. And then we've got five. Yes, we do. Minus six. Yes, we do. Minus 10. Yes, we do. Five. Yes, we do. Okay, we write Y. It, huh? Oh, look at that right there. You mean that two? Two. Two. Okay, so that's that's where it is. That's where the two is. So we have x double prime minus four. Okay, x double prime minus four. All okay. right. So at that point, we'll take out the big eraser. All right. Yeah, that's better. Now we have a characteristic equation. Um, r squared minus 4r plus 3 and uh, is equal to 0 and that factors r is equal to um, r minus 3r minus 1 so x of t has to be in the form c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the t. Okay. And the you know, rest of this can go away because it is so pathetically hosed. It's really bad looking. Okay, so that all went away. Oh, well, this, this is pretty simple now. Okay, now we're going to apply an initial condition x at 0 is 1, which might mean c1 plus c2 has to equal 1. All right, now what are we going to do? So y, y prime What? Did I do something else wrong? Okay, well I can write that y prime is 2x prime minus 3x minus 3x so I can do that All right, so that's going to be y prime is 2 times 3c1 e to the 3t plus C2 e to the t minus 3 C1 e to the 3t plus C2 e to the t. Okay, so y prime is going to be there's 6 minus 3. 3c1 e to the 3t. There's a 2 minus 3 minus c2 e to the t. Okay. Now we're a little bit of a pickle here. What are we going to do with that? 
demonstrate. If I integrate both sides of the equation, if I do that, I get y of t c1 e to the 3t minus c2 e to the t plus some new constant of integration c3 y at 0 is c1 minus c2 plus c3 which is equal to y at 0 is 1 minus 1 I guess so. Now, can I drop that C3 guy? Can I just ignore him? Oh, probably not. Um, yes. I look at the two original equations. There are no constants in them, right? So C3 has to be 0. C3 is equal to 0 by inspection. OK. So that has to be the case. What was my first equation? C1 plus C2. So I have, I have um, C1 plus C2 is equal to 1. So 2C1 has to be 0, implying that C1 is 0 and C2 is 1. OK, so C2 is 1. All right, so y of t has to equal m minus, is there a minus sign there? Minus e to the t. And x of t has to equal, what is x of t? e to the, e to the t, because this guy's zero. Ooh, ha. <laughs> luck, luck, total luck. There's luck, and then there's total luck, right? Yeah. And then there's, we got it wrong the first time, we can't make the same mistake twice. Okay. So was that fun or was that fun? Control-Alt-Delete.